Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we are in the front yard. The weather is absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna begin prepping the front beds for into fall, into winter. And with that preparation, we're going to be doing some pruning. We're also gonna be planting up some new perennials and annuals. So with the cool weather finally here, um, it's been really nice. I feel rejuvenated. I feel like my garden, we got four inches of rain the other day. Everything feels like resuscitated. <laughs> Everything's feeling really good. But I do have a lot of overgrowth on a lot of my shrubs, including these boxwoods and these hollies up front. So those need to be cleaned out. I need to do some work on my crepe myrtle back there. Um, these super tungas have had it, so we're going to pull them up. And I'm going to be plot putting in some new perennials and some annuals, the annuals that will over winter. I'm going to break this video up into two parts. So I think what the first thing we're going to do is I got my clippers ready. Let's go ahead and start pruning on the crepe myrtle a little bit. Okay over here I have a crepe myrtle. This was just something that was put in with the builder's grade um, landscaping and I love and hate it at the same time. I've cut it all the way down to the base in order to restructure it into being a multi-trunk situation. So what I want to do today is I kind of want to get in here and start seeing what's going on on here, pruning out some of the branches and really trying to focus on some of the branches that I want to become the main branches in this design. Okay so basically I'm sitting <laughs> down in here and I'm really just trying to look at the base and I have a lot going and I probably want to li limit this to either three or five branches. So I am going to go ahead and cut out some of these smaller ones just to kind of give me a better idea of what's going on in here. So you're going to see me removing some of these and I'm really going to be looking for the stronger branches. Now I really like this one branch right here because it's angling this way and during the hottest part of the year that means it's going to cast shade onto my hydrangeas which are right behind it. So definitely want to keep that one and you're going to hear a bunch of basketballs bouncing behind me because my boys are outside enjoying the weather. I'm also going to start to clean up the bottom of these chunks a little bit so I can see a little bit better about what's going on and what the shape of these look like another small one in there. All right, let me bring y'all in a little closer. It looks like there's a couple of bulbs down here. Random. Okay, so I like this branch too. I'm going to continue to just, I'm pulling off all of these kind of lower things on here just so I can like better see the shape of the branches to kind of help me better make a decision about what I want to do. Okay, I'm going to slide on back behind this to clear out a few more of the branches. Okay, so you can see that I've removed a lot, cleaning it up, taking a look. I'm also removing a lot of the foliage right up until the single branch starts to split. And you can see this one split, splitting into multiples. And that's just giving me a better idea um, of what these branches might look like in the future um, as they continue to grow taller. 
I took out quite a bit more than half. Crepe myrtles in my area are pretty tried and true. Um, it's actually pretty hard to kill them. I don't top my hydrangeas. I know a lot of people in my area top their hydrangeas. I, I mean, not hydrangeas, <laughs> crepe myrtles. I do not top my crepe myrtles. Yeah, definitely really liking the look of this. And definitely opens up everything underneath, which is really nice. Also shows all the weeds that I have. Lots and lots of weeds. <laughs> I'm not going to stress about it. Yeah, I think this is looking really nice. This leaves seven trunks currently. Now, I'll allow these seven trunks to continue growing over the next couple of years. And I'll work really hard to keep from here down clean and open. Um, that'll be really nice for additional perennials and such that I'm wanting to put in this area. And I am going to be putting some perennials back here today on this project. I don't know if it's going to be the second video or the first video. But yeah, this is look, looking really nice. Thinning this out, it's going to become more artistic and interesting. It's going to continue to providing shade where I need it. But yeah, that looks really good. Okay, another area I want to clean out are these supertinias. So I did try to get these soap petunias to survive over um, the summer and they technically survived. I wouldn't say they thrived and I am just I'm tired of looking at them. The pink is not doing it for me on the um, design on my fall design. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull them out. That was one plant I just pulled out and I've got another pink one here there and another pink one right here. We'll pull both of those out. So I think one of the things I need to do differently next year for the super tunas is I need to cut them back before they start suffering. Um, you can see that they have like a lot of woodiness at the bottom of them. I need to probably cut them back early June, like into May, early June, I think would be smart. And then that would give me an opportunity to get down closer to the base so I don't have such a woody buildup of stems. Um, so I'm going to keep experimenting with supertingas, seeing what process needs to be done to help them overwinter here in the south. Um, or seen overwinter, over summer, I should say. Here in the south, they do really well in the northern climates. Um, but here... As soon as it starts to get hit, they uh, hot, they really start to struggle. So this allows me to clean out a little bit more of this area. I've got right here is a holly, um, a petite holly, and it actually needs to be much smaller. I did not trim it this year. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get my electric trimmer set up, and I'm going to go ahead and clean up this holly, and I've got another one and a couple of boxwoods I want to take care of. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so this is Bach & Decker electric hedge trimmers. I've had them for a very long time. I have never sharpened them. Just kind of is what it is. I mean, maybe this is 15 to 20 years old. I had it for quite a while and it just keeps on trucking and it works for me. So I've never found the need to buy anything else different or new. I do know that the sharper your blade is, the better cuts you're going to get. When I'm working with a shape, if I'm going to be working in the round, I always like to start at the bottom and work my way up. Um, I also like to go across the top and find out where my top is and then work to that point. So we're going to go across the top first. All right, and that's going to be the top of my shrub. So now I'm going to work to the bottom and I'm working in a curve shape. And I'll work all the way around. And 
and you can definitely see the ball shape forming. I'm going to remove some of this maiden hair fern just so I can see a little better about what's going on in here. Now, theoretically, I would have done this um, at the beginning of the spring, um, which would have been great, but I didn't. <laughs> so I'm definitely behind on this. You're going to see some woody areas down here, but now that that exposed to the light, it will be able to produce more foliage. You can definitely see that my trimmers are not very sharp. That's why you see these incomplete branches up here. So I will go back and hand trim some of those. But basically, there's enough time before my first frost or even hard freeze um, but for this to actually put on some new growth and harden up and protect itself in the areas that I've grown or that I've cut. You definitely want, don't want to do this right before you're going to get significantly cold freeze or you can seriously damage the plant. Come across the top. Then come up the sides. Okay, got that one cleaned up too. It would be a good project in the off season for me to spend some time sharpening the electric hedge trimmer. <clears throat> I don't actually think it's that hard. I just think it takes time. All right, next I'm gonna work on this boxwood right here. My boxwood, have some dead branches. I've been told that these dead branches mean that they have blight, but they have remained healthy, um, with the exception of a branch or two every once in a while. Um, you can see I did not trim these all this year. <laughs> and so we're gonna go through the same process, starting at the top. And then we're going to start from the bottom. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, the shape of these is about a million times better. Um, this is a large container down here, terracotta container been really nice. Um, it has, let's see, some verbena in here. It's got salvia. It's got some apertina, um, but it's looking really good. And then it has all this lacy fern down here is made in hair fern. Um, it's looking really good. Do you have a lot of hellebores under all this business? The, um, this will all die back for the winter and then all of the maiden hair fern will die back for the winter too which will expose all the hellebore underneath it which will give me a beautiful show early spring or late winter early spring which i love so they're not perfect 
definitely cleaned up more and better fit for the time of the year, especially to allow sun to my hellebores this winter. Okay, I have one more Supertinia here. I tried to overwinter it, so let's go ahead and pull that guy. Um, I have a random Dianthus over here, which I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. That's from Dianthus I had for a few years. Just do a little bit of cleanup back here. Um, this is a Phlox over here that has iron deficiency. It's not doing awesome. Still have a Hookera back here that is going to get moved to the shade guard. I just literally haven't done it yet. Um, but it was not doing well and lots of y'all suggested that I go ahead and get it moved. So we are going to do that at a later point in time. I did grow a lot of safflower back here. Um, it didn't do well. It didn't have enough sun. So it only gave me a few blooms. But it's a good experiment. I grew it from seed. Let's try it out. See what I think. I think... Maybe I should go ahead and pull up the sucra and plant it in like a container. And then over here I have a serendipity, serendipity allium that I think would be better to move up into this location. So why don't we do that and see how that turns out. Okay, so we've got the hookra. This is a black pearl hookra. It's done really well compared to all the other ones. But definitely gets too much sun in this location. It's been in this location about a year. And with the new side garden really coming together, I think now's a good time to go ahead and get this up. And let's see, here we go. Super easy. I've got the Serendipity Allium. It's been here for a couple of years, and I know I'm only moving it over a small amount, but I do have a Gallardia right there in front of it and that is a perennial. So I'd like to move the allium over to the side. This soil is all really moist because we've had four inches of rain. So I'm gonna to try to keep this as much intact as possible. I'm literally just picking it up and moving it over. And then putting some additional soil around its base. Hopefully this will give it the opportunity to get a little larger. I do enjoy it. Really should get some more um, allium and put some more over here. I think that'd be nice. It just hasn't been a priority on my list. Okay, so I got this area cleaned up. So we pulled the hookra and planted it up in a pot for now. Moved the serendipity of allium. Now I have this fantastic space. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be transplanting some perennials from another portion of the garden into the space. And I really want it to be dramatic. So I think that's going to be very exciting. Everything else is looking really nice. We cleaned up the two holly bushes up front and the two boxwoods in the back. They're not the best, but they are what they are. They're just foundation plants for my, um, for my garden. And I don't play a lot with shrubs. Pretty much all this dies back um, over the winter time. So, and then we pulled up the, um, the super tunias in both these places, which I think looks really good. And we're going to be filling this with some annuals. And then back over here, we really spent some time cleaning up the crepe myrtle. And of course, I've got sun hitting just the right angle but we cleaned up the crepe myrtle to allow a lot more sun underneath it and so what I'm going to be doing on that area probably be clearing out a lot of this dusty miller it doesn't look as good as you would think in person um, it had a rough summer and I'm going to be pulling that up and I have a series of additional perennials that are going to go in this area which I think will be good and then we will tuck in some winter annuals but we'll move on to part two all right, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed this part one, getting this front area in order. And that's kind of where I'm starting to turn. Even though we've just started getting cooler, our fall is very short here. I typically get my first frost in um, mid-November. We still will get maybe one or two more 90 degree days. Um, it just stays hot in here and then it gets really cold. <laughs> but now is the time for me to start 
maneuvering any perennials that I want done, I want to give them at least a month of growing time with the roots in order to establish themselves prior to the colder weather. All right, and so we'll cover most of that in part two. Hope you guys stay tuned for the next one. It'll post tomorrow morning. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know my latest videos are up. And be sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.